In this video, we're going to be looking at what we call radial objects, or radially symmetric objects, which show up in some of the hardest problems in the ADA practice materials and on the actual DAT. We've collected these example problems from two sources. The first source of these problems is the ADA sample items, which you can find explanations for on this tab of our course. The second source is the ADA online materials, which you can purchase on their website here. If you scroll down to practice tests, they allow you to purchase access to an entire DAT, as well as individual sections if you just wanted to purchase the PAT by itself. Whether or not you've ever completed these practice problems yourself, we still want to talk through them and review them together, making sure that you understand how to analyze these objects and their answer choices, as of course we can expect them to be very representative of what you'll actually see on your test day. As I said in this first video on ADA problems, we're going to be looking at their radial objects, like this one, which are fairly simple and symmetrical, but still tricky to analyze, and often have very challenging answer choices. We have many radial object problems in our question banks, so be sure to go through those so you can make sure that you understand how to approach these kinds of problems. But even so, let's not miss the opportunity to analyze these objects and answer choices from the test makers themselves. So let's get started. We're going to start here with this problem, which we've already been looking at. These radial objects are always tricky because it's hard to tell in which direction to analyze the object. In this case, I think it's easiest to start by looking at the top view. Remember that the shape of the aperture will always be determined by the largest part of the object from that direction. In this case, the base of the object appears to be the largest, and the entirety of the top part of the object is a bit narrower. Look at these relative widths if we add brackets. And that means for the top to bottom aperture, we don't have to worry about any of these weird edges or faces towards the top of the object. So focusing just on the base, we can see that the base of the object appears to have fairly straight edges, which resembles what we see in choice A. Choice D, on the other hand, which also looks like it could potentially be the top to bottom aperture, doesn't look quite right, as it looks like the top view, but with a whole bunch of extra points. You probably wouldn't be able to see these points, for example, in the actual aperture's outline, because they don't sit that far out. They really don't appear to extend any further than the base of the object, and therefore it wouldn't create any extra points in the aperture. So we can eliminate that one. As a top to bottom aperture, choice A definitely looks better than choice D. But we also want to look at the other alternative views to make sure that we can rule out the other answer choices. Now for the issue of how to analyze the front to back aperture and the side to side aperture. This can be a little tricky because you can technically look at these views from these two directions, but you would get an entirely different aperture if you looked at the object from straight on or straight from the side. In my experience, the DAT usually has correct answers that are more consistent with this direction or this direction, which in this case are the same because the object is very symmetrical. So let's look at that first. If we look from that standard front to back perspective that we use, the one thing I notice is these points right here that sit fairly close to the ends of the object. It can be helpful to note these relative positions, which is easiest to appreciate over here. After that, it should go down fairly straight to this shorter point near the center. Maybe it bulges out a little bit at this point, but it's hard to tell, so probably isn't super drastic. So let's compare that to our other answer choices. When I look at choice B, it looks like these points might be a little too close to the center. On the object, those points sit more towards the outside and less towards the center. And I think it's also just a little too tall overall. Look specifically at this middle area that looks a little bit shorter in the object. This slope also looks a bit too steep compared to the object. So B is close, but we can definitely eliminate it. And choice C looks even more obviously wrong. Instead of sloping down to the lowest point at the center, it's flat in the center. So we can definitely eliminate that. And choice E likewise has this weird shape that's flat at the top and then dips down really sharply in the center, which does not match the object at all. Then, just to be safe, I always look at those alternative views, like directly from the front or directly from the side, which again, those two would be the same as each other in this object because it's so symmetrical. We can see though that those two views would end up with apertures that have three distinct points. And that's not consistent with any of the answer choices that we've been given. 
So we can safely say that choice A is our correct answer. Here is a rotating view of the object from this problem. Notice how the object looks from the standard front to back view, and then from straight on. And notice how the shape of the top view looks like choice A. Now we do have a disclaimer. The objects that we're creating for you here and in our ADA sample item explanations are our best estimations of what the test makers were going for. Sometimes the objects that they show in their older problems seem a little off or don't completely line up with what they show as the correct aperture. This could be due to a lot of things, but typically it doesn't affect how you solve the problem in any way. So we've here done our best to interpret what the ADA shows in a way that makes sense to us. This next problem also has a radial object, though it's slightly less symmetrical than the previous object, but it just consists of two triangular parts fused together. It's important to notice first that the triangles are perpendicular, and this triangle seems to sit in the middle of the other one. It also looks like it's sticking out about this far on this side, and like a lot of the ADA radial objects, it's pretty symmetrical. Let's look at the side-to-side -side view first. From this view, we can't really see the triangular shape of either part of the object. In the side-to-side -side aperture, we would have a short rectangular part at the top and at the bottom, and longer rectangular shapes on the sides. The horizontal triangle looks pretty symmetrical, so I would assume that both the left and right side are about the same length. This actually means that we can eliminate choice A, because it's pointed at the top, and choice D, which shows this shape, which is skewed to one side. Because of the general symmetry of the object, we can assume that the top to bottom aperture is the same in many ways as the front to back aperture, with the exception that the wings, so to speak, of the horizontal arrow are much wider than that of the vertical arrow. So we'll want to compare the remaining answer choices to either one of those or use the views in conjunction to figure this out. It appears to me that B, C, and E differ as to whether you can see a clean triangular shape or whether there's a rectangular shape sticking out around it, disrupting the outline. From the top to bottom view, I can see that the side of this arrow fits neatly into the outline of the other arrow. So it doesn't seem like there would be a rectangular shape sticking out around the arrow in this part of the aperture. Meanwhile, I can also see from the front to back view where this edge runs right into the outline of the other arrow. So this matches choice B since B is the only one that has that clean, clear arrow shape. And we can see in our rotating object how these edges would line up. And then here it is from the side view. Interestingly, we actually have a problem in our question banks where our arrows are shaped a little bit differently. In this case, you would see the rectangular shape in the outline near the other arrow's point. So try this out in our question banks because it's really interesting to see what changes in the object create different changes in the apertures. Log into our course to access our full video on radial keyhole objects. Most importantly, practice using all of our great radial object problems and read our explanations carefully, and this type of keyhole question will be no problem on your test day.